So here we are, it's another beautiful spring day and I'm sitting at home in the UK in my garden. Why am I doing that and not on my boat? Well, it's very simple. We're in lockdown here. It's been extended. COVID-19 has meant that we can only go out for important things, important journeys, exercise and to work if we can't work from home. That means I am at work when I'm not I'm sitting here in my garden. What I'm not doing is working on my boat and it's really 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 frustrating because we've had a run of beautiful weather and I managed to get several projects started over the tail end of the winter and into the early spring and uh, it's those that I'm going to share on this particular episode and so you can have a look at some of the things that we started to do it's just so frustrating that I can't finish them but first of all thank you all to everybody who's staying at home and keeping us all safe thank you to everybody that's still working in order to help us stay safe and lastly, thank you to all the video producers and the channel uploaders, the sailing channels and the how-to channels that I've really enjoyed watching over the last few weeks. Thank you, thank you so much. What a difference a day makes. The very following day the weather had changed completely and I took myself down to one of the marine stores to start picking some bits for my projects. But the weather was getting worse and the UK was set for a number of storms starting with Storm Dennis. So at that point I knew there was only one thing to do. I took myself off for some liquid refreshment and started browsing online and started ordering some of the bits for the projects that I would need. I'm really excited about what's in these boxes. I ordered it and I wasn't really sure how good it was going to be. But look at this, I'm really impressed with it. Six millimeter EVA foam flooring. It's much, 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 much nicer than I thought it was gonna be. I've seen some really, really rubbish versions of this. And uh, look what else we've got. Canopy material for the front screen, rope for the windlass stay, sealant, even a shower head and some cushion material as well. I've got a lot to be going on with and we've got a lot to do to get the boat ready for this year. Come and have a look and see what we're going to do with it all. Now I spoke about this the last time I was at the boat. We spend a lot of time at anchor and uh, the reason I wanted to make this up is because I want to take the strain off the anchor chain pulling on the windlass. So I've uh, spliced this up and I measured it up last time I was at the boat. A couple of eyes on the end here. Um, splicing's dead easy. If you've not had a go at it at all, have a look on YouTube. There are plenty of instructional videos. It's well worth being proficient at. So I've put a couple of long splices in there. It's going to take a fair old piece of uh, piece of weight and uh, stress. These will go on the front eyes of the front uh, cleats of the boat. It will go through the front fair leads, and this will clip onto the anchor chain and uh, take some of the stress off that. That will enable us to just slack out the anchor chain a bit but keep the boat under control hanging on the anchor. So 
This is made up already. I'm sorry I didn't do an instructional video on how to do that, but splicing is, it is actually a lot easier. Don't be frightened by it. Have a look at some of the instructions and I'm sure you'll be able to do some really good splicing too. And here's my usual puddle of water that I have every time I arrive at the boat. Uh, that's caused by the little hole where the canopy, the front canopy doesn't quite match match up with the rest of the canopy now. Um, I find my own personal puddle every time I come just to greet me and tease me. And there's the offending hole at the top there. That's uh, that's going. That's going to be changed when I uh, re-pattern the canopy. I'm going to make sure that uh, matches up and closes up quite nicely. So I've come downstairs and we've got no power. I can't make my cup of tea. Uh, going back upstairs, I'm going to have a look and find out what's going on. Everything looks okay to start with, except for the trips were off. Uh, I've reset them, but still no power. So I'm just going to unplug for a second because I think I found out what the problem is. I'm tracing along the actual cable that goes to the vessel and have a look at this. There, the cable's actually sheared in half and I can actually see where it's been arcing out on the uh, on the pontoon itself there so that's obviously caused a short and uh, even though there was quite a lot of slack I think the high winds just they just pulled it and rubbed it into the uh, into the sharp edge there and uh, that's what's causing the problem so job number one today is changing the uh, the distribution plug on the on the mains cable that goes to the boat So I've re-terminated this lead for now, but it looks like I'm going to need a new one because that plug is absolutely knackered as I found out rewiring it. But uh, we're all connected again, so let's go and have a look and see if we've got electricity. And there it is, we've got some electricity and the kettle's boiling. Yay! And as if by magic, everything's put back together on the V-berth at the front of the boat. So one of the first projects I really wanted to tackle was the cockpit sole. I'd had it covered with some carpet which I popped down about four years ago but that was really tatty now and I'd found this six millimeter EVA foam flooring and I was much more impressed when it was delivered than I thought I was going to be. It's uh, sticky backed with like a 3M backing and I'm not going to pretend it's teak and it certainly isn't up to the standard of some of the professional flooring but uh, I figured how was I going to start? And the best way that I could come up with as a solution was to get the old carpet and use that as a pattern to trace around and cut the first corner out. Because once the first part of the floor was down, I'd have a key which I could work backwards from uh, and cut around the engine hatches and the lazarette hatches. I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to do that to start with, but I found it relatively easy to cut with dressmaker scissors and I'd got myself underway. So this is the corner I traced out from the old carpet. It's going to be the beginning point. I've got a bit of uh, fiddling around to do to make that fit correctly. Uh, but what I'm going to do is fit this corner first and pattern out around the doorway. Um, then I'm going to take it back to this line here. Then I'm going to cut out the basis of the opening engine door which is underneath here. Um, this is the most difficult corner to do. Once we've done this, we've got a really good pattern to move on and carry on with the rest of the boat. So I've patterned out this first corner and I was tracing it back and I mismeasured a tiny little bit. But thankfully, it's right on the lip of the engine hatch so I should be able to save that and uh, rescue that tiny little bit there. I was looking for something to radius these edges and I was thinking about using the edge of a, a bowl but uh, actually for the sake of four screws I may as well just take the whole engine hatch off and lay that on top of the flooring and trace around it. Seems like the best option.
let's have a look see now okay so the floor is all cleaned um, I think what I want to do now is try and get this edge here and the edge here stuck down first because I think these are the the main areas of alignment and if I get those right everything else should line up perfectly as well fingers crossed okay so that's the first bit on I think that's gone fairly well um, I think the next step is to put the hatch back in place and uh, fit the rest of this panel on. I need to cut that and try and make the gap around the edge as even as possible to make it look as pretty much like flexi teak as I can, even though this has cost me £30 for this sheet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bargain really. It looks pretty good. I'm quite impressed with it, although I have got a slight gap problem at the back there. Um, I kind of misjudged it a little bit but generally I'm pleased it's better than the carpet that was on there um, nice to see the engine bay is nice and clean though and nice and dry um, since the last time I cleaned it out if you remember it was uh, a little bit wet in there after the winter but uh, it stayed dry since um, at some point in time we're going to be getting the engine serviced I've got a plan uh, to make this panel fit correctly I'm going to have to have these pieces aligned in a straight line and these pieces aligned in a straight line so that when we put the next panel in it matches up perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a couple of offcuts and just stick them down temporarily there and there to act as a sort of jig and then what I'm going to do is stick this down and just use a straight edge and a Stanley knife to hopefully just cut this section out straight on top of the engine hatch. So I finished up the last of the back, um, however I'm not really happy about the gaps around the edge of this engine, engine hatch. Uh, but I've got spare material so I may do it again. However, I've been told, and I've seen a video on YouTube as well, that suggests you can sand the edges of these and make them look uh, a little bit rounder. And it can sort of hide those uh, small errors. But um, yeah, generally very pleased with it. It's better than the carpet, so dead happy. The old carpet had been quite rigid, so using it as a template had saved a whole load of time and turned out to be a really great idea. So I copied this and replicated it with the rest of the flooring, traced it out, and once again it was really easy to cut out and gave me a basic shape to work with. And I've got to say, cutting that out from the template of the existing mat looks pretty good. That does look pretty good. So the only thing that I have got to do is cut the lazarette hatch lid off um, or out uh, and I've got a template for that which I've made up and some paper so we're going to give that a go and get this fitted before the battery dies on the camera. So I've got all the floor done in the cockpit. Um, I'm quite pleased with the general floor but I'm not pleased with the lids. Um, I've got plenty of spare material and if you can see here it's getting dark now and I'm making mistakes because I'm tired as well um, I haven't really cut this around so well not as well as I did the first one so I think I'm going to call it a day today and I'm going to remake that lid tomorrow a little bit of trimming up and this will be absolutely fantastic I was really pleased that I'd started some of the projects the floor was looking okay, it still needed a little bit of finishing off and my plan was to be coming back the next day to get some of that work done. Unfortunately, things changed. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. That is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day, for example, a run, walk or cycle, alone or with members of your household. Any medical need to provide care or to help a vulnerable person. And 
travelling to and from work, but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home.